Earth. It's the most special place in the universe. To humans, it is both cradle and prison. Humans, however, are not the only beings gifted with intellect and free will. I suppose you could say that I learned that the hard way. There's more going on around us than what our eyes perceive. Some things are just not what they appear to be. I've learned of demonic forces cast out of heaven, attempting to assault our home. I've also learned of powerful angels sent to protect us from them. But I'm still learning. All of this took place 10 years ago, which seems like a lot of time, doesn't it? Well, sometimes it still feels like yesterday. There was me, Janya, Sam, and Deborah. On the way to the campsite, Jason and Sam got into a bit of an argument with Sam accusing Jason of hitting on Debbie even though he is dating Janya. But while they are arguing, they are literally hit by what appears to be a meteor shower. But for their understanding, they marked it up to be a lightning strike. And though they were hurt, something strange happened to Jason and Sam which Jason mocked up to thinking he was hallucinating as he saw something like an astral version of his hand like holding a sword. But they shake it off and head up to the campsite with Sam most excited to brag about it to the girls. When they get to the campsite, Sam immediately rushes over to Debbie to tell her all about what happened. But in the process, he scared off a blue jay that she was watching, making her annoyed at him. When Jason came across to tell him to ease up, Sam loses it going into full joke mode shoving Debbie into Jason, implying that she is in love with him, even though he is literally with her best friend Jania, who is right there. Jay became extremely concerned as though Sam had always been a douche, what he just did was different and much harsher than before. Later that night, Sam apologized to Debbie but still didn't get the memo, as he still tried to force himself onto her, which pissed her off even more not accepting his apology. In the morning, the squad held over to the cliff that the whole trip was planned around, with Jason encouraging them that it would be fun as he has done it many times before and will guide them every step of the way. But the fun quickly turned to horror when Debbie's rope snapped and she fell to her death. A moment that completely broke Jason from that point forward as he blamed himself for Debbie's death, despite everyone clearly stating and knowing that it was an accident. Jason continued to blame himself. That very moment still haunted him for an entire decade into the future. Over the years, Jason and Jania broke up and their friendship grew cold and distant as they both went along their own paths in life. Jason's path, though he continued to live in full regret of the moment, eventually led him to Philadelphia where he planned to meet up with Jania for the first time in a long while as she has some news to share with him. As he was on his way to the meetup spot, he noticed a couple arguing in the middle of the road with a car speeding towards them with no intent of stopping. And in what felt like a flash, Jason lunged forward and got them out of the way followed by saving the driver. It all happened so fast that he didn't even realize his body had turned completely blue and he had wings. After everything was clear, he flew right out of there, recapping to his father that everyone was looking at him as if he was some kind of alien. As for the meetup with Jania, which was at Debbie's grave actually, Jason believed he messed up and made a complete fool of himself as he couldn't think straight, especially after seeing Debbie's grave. Jania wasn't the only meetup with an old friend he had that day. After leaving Debbie's grave, he ran into Sam for the first time in a decade, and Jason was furious, pushing him away, asking, finally decide to pay respects? But Sam declares that he wasn't there to visit Debbie's grave. He was there to take out Jason and claim his reward, lunging into him with a strange yet familiar energy surging through Sam. Though Sam's aura felt something like a bulldog to Jason, reminding him of the energy he felt when he saved the couple and flew away. Believing that in order to reawaken his power, he will also have to channel it into some kind of aura. Jason chose the blue jays that Debbie was looking at the day before she died in the heat of the moment, forming an entire costume around himself and punching Sam away. Sam then taunts him and gives him a bit more information about what the lightning strike actually was 10 years ago, all while pummeling Jason in the process. It wasn't lightning, nor was it a meteor. It was something along the German legend that pissed Exilis. I probably butchered that. A stone from the heavens able to give great power. Some mistook it for the holy grail, but Sam knows better, going by the name Bulldog after awakening his power. 
He wants Jason's power from that day through killing him just like he did Debbie 10 years ago. Sam states that he sabotaged Debbie's rope that day and he took a soul, proclaiming that she is all his as she should have been long ago. And now Jason can no longer stand between them. And at such a statement, Jason becomes furious, manifesting a sword and lunging right at Sam, slashing him across his chest and pulling the bulldog aura right out of him in his rage, rendering Sam unconscious. He is indifferent and confused and doubts that Sam is telling the truth. But it does get him thinking that he needs to find out the truth behind the power. Then we end this issue off with a quote of Matthew 25 from verse 20 to 21 in the NIV saying, the man who had received the five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. And with that, let's put Blue Jay issue one on our Christian fiction judgment scale. For the story, I'll give it a 3.5 out of 5. Written by Mattia Bollerelli and Gabriel Dill. I am sorry, Mattia, if I butchered your last name. The story is off to a good start with a pretty interesting concept. I will be upfront and state that when I first got into the comic, I kind of was on the fence. But when rereading it for the review, I kind of like it a lot. But then again, this is the first issue of a comic line of six published issues. So that's usually how I feel with most of the issue ones we cover. I did like the character development of Jason a lot in this issue, especially the pages going over his grief about the death of Debbie, which I did over summarize into two lines in this video, even though that section was honestly the highlight of the issue for me. I just felt like his power awakening aspect was a bit meh. Going from a detail working through depression and guilt section to a I just like that, I'm a superhero now, kind of, I felt like... Okay. Like at first, I honestly thought he was hallucinating the whole saving the couple from the car crash with his powers just manifesting out of nowhere like that. But then as I continued reading and did a little reread of that panel, I realized, oh wait, no, he's actually just recapping all these events to his father. Especially the meetup for Jania section, which I must say was the the only panel provided for this section was, I don't know, the hugging or something. But when we came back around to it, it was actually that he messed up. So to me, the image, the panel that was provided did not match the dialogue that was being spoken. Because at first I thought it was, oh, they rekindled. But then... Uh, it was like he messed up and I was like, that's not what this picture of them embracing shows. I don't know if it sounds like nitpicking, but I just stuff that kind of drew me out from how it went from just the flow of that section. The ending fight between him and Sam, who goes by the name Bulldog, did quite hook me in. Like I am looking forward to learning more about that aspect of the whole bulldog and blue jay aura as well as well it was hinted at the beginning whatever um spiritual aspects and elements into it when it comes to artwork and creativity this issue is a 3.5 out of 5 on our scale with six credited artists all working on different sections of the book the final six i think is the final six pages with sam and jason's battle i really like the art style of those pages a lot as well as the art style of the first two pages of the comic book with the opening dialogue of what appeared to be an angel and a demon crashing to it when it comes to theological basis which refers to how well christian principles are adapted in a piece of fictional work i'll honestly give this one a 2.75 out of 5 which is our signature rating when there is a statement of faith made by the author, a character or two is implied to be a believer and then there is a scripture put into the comic panel. But we can't really make any definitive theological rating off of it as yet, as you don't know enough. Like, yes, it started with there's things unperceivable to humans that happen within the world, so most likely referencing the spiritual realm. But... The whole thing with the aura of Blue Jay 
probably be in the essence of an angel and the aura of the bulldog probably be in the essence of a demon something like that there are questions that i need answered to be able to determine if the score goes up or down in the future issues and this one kind of just gives us like a little slice so based off of the little slice it's a 2.75 for me when it comes to my recommendation versus all the other comics we've covered on the channel it's a three out of five the Asprey comic book line has been on my backlog to cover for a while now, especially with the appearance of the characters popping up in two different comic series we have covered on the channel, being Alfred and Biblical Proportions. So I must say this issue was a good start to the six issue sprint that we're going to be doing throughout, well, most likely going into next year. So overall, Blue Jay issue 1 by Asprey Comics gets a 3.2 out of 5 from the explanations. Let me know if you agree or have a different take than I do in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, then why not consider leaving a like on it and subscribing for more reviews and coverage of comics made by professing believers. If you enjoyed the video to the point you want to check out another one on the channel, then be sure to click the card at the top right hand corner of your screen to check out our other Asprey Comics reviews or check out our review of Alfred issue 5 where Jason joined the fight to help Wes fight the devil.